We have Nagarjun Dwarkanath who is uh, going to be moderating the session here with Anamalai. A big round of applause. If you can ask the audience to be seated, please. <laughs> Mr. Anamalai, thank you for attending the India Today Roundtable. Uh, at the start of this session, I want to ask you about, you have been in the news in the last four days for the DMK files. You also tweeted that you have received 1,400 crore defamation cases till now that the suit has been filed against you. What is that that you're targeting about? The DMK feels that these numbers are not credible. What is the evidence behind such exaggerated numbers? In fact, this is only part one of uh, what we have released, sir. I think the numbers are pretty high. Uh, 1,34,000 crore for about 11 people in DMK uh, who are in the party for about 30, 40 years in government right from 1967. And we didn't just randomly put any numbers out there. Uh, so we have disclosed about uh, approximately 190 companies owned by them, different shell corporations across the world and the money laundering things that had happened. So and each one we have valued professionally and we have put it on the website also. I think more than the numbers, 1,34,000 crore, what we are more interested to talk uh, in the, among the Tamil population over a point of time, we want to bring corruption as the central narrative of Tamil Nadu politics. But unfortunately, uh, corruption is taken as, a, as, as how things are and nobody wants to talk about it. And we want to bring corruption as the center of narrative. And more importantly, to, to bring it to the public forum, how a state with 7,20,000 crore debt uh, all is not rosy in Tamil Nadu. When, when anybody from outside look at it, we are a state with 7,20,000 crore debt. And uh, servicing this loan will take next 40, 45 years. And all of this money are siphoned off. And big corporations, shell companies, again it comes back as white money back into Tamil Nadu. So you want to put this at the center of narrative. And naturally for DMK as a party, it's a, it's a very well organized party. And uh, if you look at it, their legal system is so strong. I, I call DMK as a Chakraview party. If you look at the the Arjuna Abhimanyu's chakra view, DMK has got layers, like an onion. It's very, very, very important we understand it. So the, the, the first family is the core of the onion. They're surrounded by intellectuals, then the Davidian ideologues, then they have the media which supports it, then they have companies which supports it, then they have the Davidian so-called intellectuals which built, which built a narrative outside it. So like an onion, you keep peeling, peeling, peeling. The final inside is the first family. So they have, they have managed it over the last 70 years. It's not very easy to take them on. But here we believe time is right. This is the time. If not now, you can't do it any time in the future. You also tweeted the audio clip of the finance minister of the Tamil Nadu uh, government, uh, PTR, that 30,000 crores is what the number that it speaks about. Mr. Udainidhi Stalin and Sabarishan would have made in the last few years since the government has been formed. Sir, again, here more than the numbers, uh, the Mr. PTR, who is our finance minister, uh, well-educated uh, US returned uh, finance minister, he makes a statement somewhere in a room or with some conversation where he says, these people started with 10 crore, 20 crore, 30 crore, right now they've gone up to 30,000 crore. That's, that's the way he speaks. But more important is he says, the CM's son and CM's son-in-law, they're making money in a month. That is more than what their grandfather made in a lifetime. This is more important. Grandfather is nothing but Kalingar uh, Karnanithi. So what lifetime is made of money, the grandsons are making in a month. And of course the number 30,000 crore to it, which substantiate what we are trying to speak with respect to the DMK file. Till now, they have sent defamation notices, they want us to pull, go to the court and everything. Till now, they haven't even said, even one company we have listed there, which is a shell company in which they are a director or something, till now they haven't said even about eight years later, this is not our company. We don't have a shareholding in this company. They're it to say. The only thing they're saying is valuation is a problem and how can you value this and all those things. So PTRG's that alleged audio conversation which got leaked outside, it is adding a lot of credence to our allegation which we made on April 14. The DMK as a party, as a government, they're making tons of money. And more than that, it is running like a criminal syndicate. Money laundering companies like Westpac and St. George's Bank in which uh, son-in-law has got some stake along with a friend, the Nobel Steel, which the CM signed an agreement for 1,000 crore, in which the CM's son is a director in that company at different points of time. So this is more important for us. And more than that, we are also taking a case to the CBI when the Chennai Metro got built in 2010-11. The French giant Alstom, which came into building, 
and we are making a very direct specific allegation through a middleman the dmk government then has taken 200 crore to award this contract to alstom which alstom later in america it paid a fine of 772 million dollars for braving countries like india egypt saudi arabia and all those places so we believe time is right now and we hope and pray the agencies would take take a hard look at it of course we are not speaking in the air we have got papers to prove evidence to share and probably you're confident would... that this case would be taken to a logical conclusion by the agencies i'm very confident sir the reason is uh, this case is a open and shut case when alstom uh, did the delhi metro also just before chennai metro there also the same problem happened there also there is a cbi case there is a corruption case happening the same companies involved the same middlemen from from hong kong and singapore are involved the same thing happened in tamil Nadu, like cut copy paste but right now we have the documents to put in the public forum to say chennai metro tender is also fixed because right before the 2011 elections they have made money and we are very confident once so CBI takes over, looking at this papers, evidences, probably people who made the mistake will go to jail. Is this a conscious call for making the corruption the center of politics for Tamil Nadu from the BJP side? Because are you somewhere not able to raise or keep up with the Dravidian politics, the whole Dravidian ideology? Is this why BJP is looking at bringing corruption as the talking point? Tamil Nadu, we have many political parties, sir. Of course, there are two preeminent political parties, Dravidian parties, but you have at least six political parties which has got a vote share of 2% and above, uh, which, is, which, does, which is not there in any state in India. And there are caste-based parties, there are regional parties which take regionalism to an extreme end, and there are parties which even now asking for a separate Tamil Nadu. And there are parties which thrived on separate Tamil Nadu in the early 60s, right now they, have, they do a soft secession. So BJP is the only party there among this uh, letter of political parties there which offers something different of course we value the regional sentiment with a national spirit and we want Tamil Nadu to do well as a party as a Tamilian myself but with a national outlook and national spirit and unfortunately Tamil Nadu what happens everything you do it becomes a North versus South it becomes Hindi versus Tamil it becomes Aryan versus Dravidian and they spin it out from Jallikattu to neat exam to everything so what is happening all of us are getting fed up by this narrative over a point of time you can't you just can't take it this is too much for anybody in the plate. It's like too much. Entrance examination, you want to politicize Aryan Dravidian. You want to politicize a simple Dahi Kurd, Tair, Aryan Dravidian. You want to politicize the allocation of coal block as Aryan Dravidian. The younger generation is suffering from lack, lack of jobs. No, but this Dahi, you wrote the letter to the uh, department saying, please remove the word Dahi. Uh, and they did remove it finally also because the same sentiments were in across southern India, even Karnataka, Telangana as well, that the local language should be used. The Honorable Prime Minister, a uh, couple of months back when he visited Tamil Nadu, one thing he was very clear to us. He said, look, treat me as a karyakarta more than a Prime Minister. And if you think there is something wrong, something not okay, something has to brought to our attention, we are just a phone call away. You just have to call somebody because mistakes happen. There are bureaucratic people everywhere. It's a clerk who will type a wrong thing. It keeps happening. It is not that it comes to our knowledge or a minister's knowledge. So we have taken the Honorable Prime Minister's word to our heart. Moment we see something is not right, not okay, and I can give you instances in the last three, four months only. I'm not going back one year before. In case of Dahi Kurd, we got it changed in 24 hours. Whereas what our CM did is immediately he started a hashtag called Stop Hindi Imposition. He wanted to do a black flag protest and everything. All it wanted was a phone call and a letter. In 24 hours, we got it right. Again, when the hydrocarbon project and also the coal block allocation was happening in Tanjavur, again, we got it out in 48 hours. The reason we are doing this is we believe our Prime Minister at heart, at heart Narendra Modi ji, is a person who gives a lot of impetus to regional sentiments. Because he comes from Gujarat. He speaks a language that is not Hindi as a mother, mother tongue. So he understands for India to do well, all regional aspirations to be met. Even for the CAPF exam, Central Armed Police Force exam, we went and met Amit Shah ji, we, we requested Amit Shah ji that it can be given in Tamil also. Great of him, kind of him, 24 hours, he said, all regional language, first time in India's history, the CAPF exam, you can write in all regional languages. Even a person born in Tamil Nadu, some corner of Tamil Nadu, without knowing Hindi, he can get into CAPF. Maybe if the state requires you to learn Hindi, please learn Hindi. But Hindi is not a condition for you to pass an exam. So we are doing it. Now DMK is also seeing it. Now DMK is like, yaar, this is our bread and butter. Till now we have only done it. Why is BJP doing it now? BJP is not doing it for political reasons. We are doing it because we believe we are a national party with regional aspirations built inside. So we are not against anybody, any race, any creed, anything. I also want to ask you about when you go to Delhi to meet your national leaders, of course they don't understand Tamil. 
what's your mode of communication? Do you also speak Hindi? Are you comfortable speaking? Have you learned the language? Every time I, uh, we happen to meet our senior leaders, we happen to meet our prime minister in our national executive meetings. Uh, after becoming a state president, I must have met our honorable PM three, four times in NEM. Every time I start with Tamil, whenever I get the opportunity to speak on behalf of Tamil Nadu, I start with the Tirukural. I say, Vanakam to Prime Minister. I speak in Tamil for two minutes, then I switch to English. Because PM wants this. Because you are naturally good in your mother tongue. You go to a big forum. Because that is where your heart is. Last time, I remember when Telangana Chief Bandi Sanjay Ji was there. He was trying to speak in Hindi. PM took the mic and told Bandi Sanjay, don't worry, speak in Telugu. Even if people don't understand what you're speaking, doesn't matter. You speak in Telugu, people will understand the spirit behind your Telugu. He spoke in Telugu for seven, eight minutes in a meeting where hardly 10 people know Telugu. So that is how Prime Minister is. But unfortunately, what is happening, the regional parties for too long, they have thrived on this Hindi, North, South and everything. They're trying to mask. It is our duty as, as Karyakartas of BJP to take this really to the masses, to Tamil Makkal, to Telugu people, to Kanadigas, to say, this is a party with a national party. But we are no means inferior to a regional party. If there is anything to protect a regional sentiment or a spirit, our party will be the first in the line to do it, not necessarily a regional party that has got its founding in the soil. So, but uh, your party is still seen as the Hindi heartland party. You have not made inroads in Kerala. Now you have four MLAs in Tamil Nadu, 25 MPs in Karnataka. Apart from the state that we are in right now, there's not been much inroads for the party in the last eight years, since 2014, almost nine years now. So what's the road uh, for you to get into this southern part of the India? Like, what's your road map? Uh, for that, I have to take a little bit of time to just go back when the Janasang got founded. And uh, in Tamil Nadu, at least for my state, when I talk, it was not very rooted there. Like, like in other parts of India, how Janasangam was rooted. It was there, leaders were there, they're trying to do their best to convince everybody. The same time, the Dravidian movement, 1917, the All India uh, Backward Classes movement started. 41, the Dravidian Kalagam came. 49, the Dravidian Munetra Kalagam, DMK came. Uh, 57, DMK contested the first election. 67, they came to power. So, they were at least 35, 40 years ahead of the Janasang when it entered. In fact, the first president of Janasang in Tamil Nadu was a Christian, Dr. John. John was our first president. The Goa struggle, all those things were happening where Tamilians went and participated there. I'm just bringing this history on the table. When, when BJP got founded in uh, 1980, then the first MLA in BJP was in 1996. 1996, we got one MLA. So you can understand the trajectory of BJP where we are coming. So there was a huge gap even before BJP was able to establish roots where DMK was in power multiple times. ADMK was in power multiple times. Very charismatic ministers. You had Dr. MGR, you had Jailalitha then, you had Annadurai, you had Kalinger Karnadadi. People, life like big figures. So BJP, the two main growth we have seen is Atal Bihari Vajpayee era, 98, 99 to 2004. Then the Narendra Modi ji era from 2014. Of course, the regional parties have a head start. There is no doubt about that, but we are catching up. And we all want to do democracy the way we want it. These regional parties have become Parivarvat parties. If you look at it, Tamil Nadu, Chief Minister, Son is a minister, son in law controls, chief minister's sister is an MP. If you look at the chief minister's family, directly, indirectly, four or five people, they hold a, hold a constitutional position. Fourteen families in Tamil Nadu, they are in the third generation now. Either the son is a minister or an MP. The same thing is in TRS in Telangana. But what BJP we intend to do is we want to build our party in a democratic spirit. It might take some time. We don't want to take shortcuts, but we are there, we will reach there. It's a matter of time. In fact, I'm quoting the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister, Mr. M.K. Stalin, saying the BJP should not think every state votes like Gujarat, the whole country is not Gujarat. So they'll find it very difficult to win even a single seat in Tamil Nadu. No, this is not first time it is being uh, said by Mr. M.K. Stalin. His father, uh, Kalingar Karnanadi, about 30 years back, he made a statement, where is BJP? I see one person here, I see one person there, I see one person there. Exact Tamil, the English translation is at it. This is when BJP had about two MPs in the parliament. He made a statement, BJP can never mark, make a mark in India. That point of time, he was the chief minister also. Now, from two, we have gone to three, not three. From a few states, we are 18, either by ourselves or with an alliance partner. The same thing will happen in Tamil Nadu also. It's a matter of time. The moment MK Stalin G is speaking about it, it means that he has taken us seriously. In the assembly, day before yesterday also, he said, 
if bjp is opposing it it will be good for dmk i'm doing it so a party like dmk which never uses the word called bjp in their lexicon is using the word called bjp daily criticizing arresting our karyakartas putting them in jail for a social media post criticizing us that itself means bjp is on the growth path would it be wouldn't it be difficult for the bjp to take on all the regional parties if dmk brs jds all of them come together it would be regional versus the national party would it be difficult for the bjp to even get into the lok sabha seats there where regional party sentiments are much stronger so the way i would answer this question is i would take a roundabout way to answer it i would say you got to invest in leadership sir uh, for national parties for a long time what has happened is the state leaders were more like managers just before i think amit shah ji in the morning session he was talking how virendra patel ji was removed in a state here when congress was in power for rajiv gandhi was ji was here and the airport they asked him do you want to change virendra patel ji he was on the flight even before the flight landed in delhi patel ji got changed that is how most national parties treated their leaders in india 356 changing not allowing anybody to settle because the parivarwad in congress was more powerful but if you look at bjp we are investing in leaders now because in our party there is a system nobody can hold a term for more than 3 years if you look at kalinger karnanidhi 38 years he was dmk president now stalin ji has taken over a couple of years back next 20 years is good to go if you look at all the leaders they run it for 30 40 40 45 years at least jalalita amma more than 20 years president of a party but in national parties what happens 3 years you have a president then again 3 years next guy again 3 years next guy this right or wrong is a problem in southern part of india because you are taking on big leaders for example you imagine my plight i am coming in as a state president i have to take on and give a statement when they make a wrong i have to criticize a leader who is 35 years above my age who is multiple time chief minister who is 25 years in the power and they have all their mlas who are third time fourth time fifth time we have hardly two three mlas who have third time or second time so the reason i am trying to tell this it will take time so bjp we are investing in leadership we are giving them a long arm we want them to settle down get established in the roots only then they can take them on so bjp will never make the mistake of congress congress had leaders as more like a like a china cup you change them you change them you change them but tamil nadu it's a long investment we are making right from district presidents to the mandal president you will see it's a 5 to 10 year journey tomorrow morning nothing is going to happen we want them to be fighters be in the ground take on issues echo the tamil sentiments if we do the process right fight and yes we are there you spoke about the future of the party in tamil nadu and in southern india as well uh, if that is the case what about the alliances when would you look that bjp would be ready to fight elections on its own in tamil nadu on its own in andhra on its own in telangana when do you see the time especially you're from tamil nadu so because in one year the lok sabha polls goes do you see in the one year or you need another five years for the party karyakartas the grassroots level infrastructure to be right to come out of an alliance stand alone and fight sir the bjp's alliance generally if you look at it it is not an electoral alliance where we just Uh, stitch something before an election we contest election we win a couple of seats in fact if you look at admk for a for pretty long time after 2017 uh, they were supporting many of the important decisions the honorable prime minister narendra modi ji did be it the farm act when many parties were opposing for the sake of opposing admk supported us there's no doubt about that at the same time we also understand being in an alliance bjp can have its own character in fact being in an alliance it is not necessary you have to speak the alliance language always but we are okay with it admk is okay with it we are okay with so it so there is healthy competition that is healthy competition because if you look at it in our alliance nda the patali makkal kachi dr anbumani ramadas the former union minister he says 2026 pmk has to come to power bjp we say 2026 we have to come to power admk says 2026 again they have to come back to power i see nothing wrong let there be a healthy competition because we have joined together on certain principles to protect our country to take the country's progress forward when the time comes when the decision is made it is for the people to decide which party should come to power that doesn't mean we are hurting the alliance interest we are trying to go behind their back we are trying to spoil their chances wouldn't wouldn't it create confusion that your alliance voters who do they look at and vote do they have to vote for bjp pmk or the aidmk because all the three parties are saying we want to come to power with full majority sir when 2024 let us imagine all of you are combining together for the lok sabha election because it is for our national president and the parliamentary board to take a call once they do us as karyakartas we we follow it then you have candidates you all candidates has got an individual strength the party has got an individual strength then in an alliance you are coming together to take on a behemoth like dmk and its and its alliance partners 
I don't think people have got that confusion to see, oh, you got to be together for 20 years for me, for me to make a very calculated choice of to elect you or not to elect. I think Tamil voters are more intelligent than that. They are more aware of that. They, they see through it. They know exactly what election, how to vote. And I am very clear 2024 is Modiji's election. It is not anybody's election. It is like 10 years we are in power. We have to go to the public and account us for 10 years what we have done, asking for another five more time. It is our election. So it is NDA's election. So the regional parties who are within the NDA also, they completely understand it. So this is a conscious decision that you have made uh, as a party because you have represented uh, Ms. Ayla Raja in the Rajya Sabha. PT Usha has been given post. And you have Kashi Tamil Sangam that the event has been started. What has been the response for this? Is, have people started accepting BGP in their own uh, native culture, that Dravidian model that you look at? Have people started to welcome you there? Maybe now whatever I say, uh, people might see this with the tinted glass of uh, Delhi is trying to take over Tamil Nadu and Delhi is trying to do this for L12 benefit. I will just give you two examples. 2010-11, when Narendra Modi was the Honorable Chief Minister of Gujarat then, two important speeches I would like to quote here. Uh, 11 when he came to Madurai to meet the Saurashtian Tamil community in Madurai, he said, look, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat, we have a long connection. Tamil Nadu, you give us, you, we give you cotton from Gujarat and Tamil Nadu, you make thread from it. So we are bounded like a cotton and a thread. So all of us are one and that is the spirit. In fact, from Tamil Nadu, Saurashtian community, thousand years back, Mohammad Gajani, then Alauddin Kilji, two different invasions, they came, they settled, there are about 21 lakh in Tamil Nadu, within Tamil Nadu, they are there. When the Elam war was happening, uh, the fag end of the UPA government, when DMK was in alliance with them, lakhs of people were getting killed in the northern province of Sri Lanka. The Honorable Chief Minister then, Narendra Modi ji, said, what is happening in Sri Lanka? My Tamil brothers and sisters are getting killed. What is the UPA government doing? So that was the spirit. Even when he was in other state, he was echoing the Tamil sentiment. That is what we are doing now. Nothing new. Revival of a thousand-year-old heritage where people from Tamil Nadu at that point of time used to walk all the way to Kashi, have a darshan of Vishwanath, again come back. In fact, many of our cities in Tamil Nadu, Ten Kasi, we have a district in Tamil Nadu, which is called Southern Kasi. We have Siva Kasi, again the name comes from Kasi. But what happened? The Dravidian movement has nullified all of this. The history is gone. They have done as if North is separate, South is separate. In fact, you come to many of our villages, it has all got many North Indian names also. So PMS Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi is trying to link back this two great culture, Kasi Tamil Sangam. As we speak now, Saurashtra Tamil Sangam is happening. There are about 4,500 Tamil Saurashtrians. As we speak now, they are in Somnath, they are in different parts of Gujarat. The Honorable Prime Minister is in Somnath on 26 as a guest of the Saurashtra Tamil Sangam. So we don't do it politically because we think it will give us some MLAs and MPs. No. Unless we recreate the bond that is essentially the spirit of India and spirit of Bharat, once we do that, elder world success will come later. Every time you need not look behind your back to see, I do this, what votes you will get. This might give you benefits after 5 years, after 10 years, but you got to do it to make sure that we are one. We are Bharatiyas. There is nothing that has divided us. That is the main intention behind all of this program. It wouldn't be fair if I don't ask you about Karnataka. You are the Karnataka co-in charge for the election. Mr. Shetter from the BJP has gone to the Congress. In one of the press conferences, he spoke of you saying that I am the chief minister, Annamalai was one of the district SPs. Now, he sits in the first row, dictate terms to us. How can this happen? That's why I moved out, because I have not been respected within the party. Annamalai, who has not even won an election, sits and decides the election strategy. Shatasar is a great person, is a very good human being, very humble. And one of our senior leaders was instrumental in building the party in the Hubli Darwad area, our former chief minister also. Of course, Sometimes, you know, people have different thought process. Somebody, some, they think their ego is hurt. They want to more. It's fine. I wish them the very best. But I know my place. Uh, uh, Shatterjee is such a big man. I'm somewhere last in the queue. I'm a very normal karyakarta. And the national leadership has felt I can contribute something here as a group. In BJP, we don't have this theory. When we sit in the table, we don't have the owner of the table. That is, in the Congress, they have a owner. So here it is. We are all equals. Even when I sit in Tamil Nadu, there are senior leaders who are 40 years senior to me, somebody who had built the party with blood and sweat. I don't differentiate that I am the state president, I am one level more than you. So it is always a collaborative approach. So I wish the very best to Shetaji. And he's such a great person. I've really learned so much from him when I was a cop also here for nine and a half years. And anything I say now, defending my action or this and that, 
it may not send a good message so i wish shatterji the very best but did you as a party try to make sure that he re remains in the party and not move to the congress sir of course uh, you must have seen uh, in the press media dirappa ji spoke where amish ji spoke to him then uh, dharmendra pradhan ji went and visited him in his home but one thing i'm learning in bjp sir over the last two and a half years it is not necessary to recognize a great leader you got to fight elections not necessary we have three tamil nadu governors now as we speak we have three tamil nadu tamilians as governors of different parts of uh, india and if you ask me out of that three how many people want an election multiple times no but they have won they become mps they have become mlas but more important is they had that service attitude the rashtrapati felt they should come and serve so in our party everybody gets opportunity if you not mla you will contest mp if not mp you will you will be a rajya sabha person then you have chance to serve everywhere so not necessarily an mla ticket is the gateway to success i really feel sad when when great leaders they chose to see this mla ticket as a ticket to success in fact i still remember when i contested the first election in tamil nadu the party asked me where do you want to contest i said you give me any ticket i'll contest and uh, the constituency where i contested and the party bjp was somewhere around 1000 votes somewhere around 2000 votes it has never crossed 3500 votes so i contested we got about 70000 votes not not because of me because of karyakarta so i am very confident in my mind i have taken one step for the party next time 2026 somebody will contest there he will win that constituency for us that's how we think as karyakartas if as a person i don't say oh no 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 i am an ex ips officer i resigned and came you give me this ticket which is good for the party party will kick me out that is not the spirit of being a bjp i think the faster we learn we survive in this party well so you got to be a humble karyakarta first be in the queue just keep doing what the party is asking you your time will come and shatterji's time came lakshman saved ji since you are not i'm just preempting your question 2018 last the election mlc deputy chief minister one among the three such a great respect uh, and again a ticket he's an mlc five and a half year term is there and constitution doesn't differentiate between an mla and mlc being an mlc you can be a minister we have mlcs who are part of the karnataka cabinet now including mtb nagaraj ji and when somebody says not giving me a ticket you have insulted me i think no that is not the spirit of a bjp and though i am very very junior to them with due respect to saavdi ji due respect to shetter ji i hold them in lot of respect they're good friends and good colleagues and good senior mentors but moment you you put that it is sending a wrong message to the junior karyakartas people slog it out people have never contested panchayat elections in my, in their lifetime we have crores of karyakartas in india they keep slogging to bring bjp to power but what is the message you're giving to them oh i don't get a ticket i am going out so if you don't also get a ticket that what differentiates us from congress the spirit of being a bjp so that i felt in karnataka election this time some of the senior leaders the kind of statements they made in the press and 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 emotionally what they spoke that was not in spirit of what the party is all about sir the congress ran a campaign called pay cm kivi mele huwa here uh, you are in charge so i'm asking you this do you feel somewhere that the party should have aggressively uh, turned the narrative or fought back the congress campaigns of pay cm and other campaigns that congress took up i answered this uh, to a friend sir a journalist friend a couple of months back when he asked me the same question i said we were busy governing when congress was setting fake narratives because this state 2018 the mandate was for bjp clear mandate was for bjp but the number 2 and the number 3 party chose to join together and come to power for one and a half years the moment bjp took over edirappa ji as cm covid you managed the covid you came out you had two major floods in karnataka you are fighting it out covid revenue got low then the floods was taking lot of your revenue out the government hardly had time to settle i would say the government hardly had about one and a half years to settle down it was going at a blistering pace to complete all the infra projects do, doing everything and the previous session also we spoke about reservation and many other things the congress did not have a narrative and congress has to understand they were in power in karnataka god knows for how many years then bjp which had fracture mandates 50 50 sarkara then you had a alliance sarkara then you had this sarkara so bjp never had a majority of its own so congress was busy saying pay tm okay fine 40% sarkara who said it a contractor said it one person in a press meet what happened to that guy the court arrested him in another case he went to jail again he came out the person who made this allegation itself went to jail and came out and simply putting a poster or something people will not believe sir people see development as we speak now especially if you go to rural parts i was in raichur day before yesterday a gentleman was telling me sir i got water in in tap to my house for the first time this was a dream for my father dream for my grandfather team dream for my grand grandfather yes 
2019 when the scheme came, Jal Jeevan Mission. Karnataka what sir? 19% of Karnataka had pipe water connection. We are at 64% now. 54 lakh farmers not only have 6,000 as PM Kisan Samanidhi, they have 4,000 extra. No other Indian state, no other government gives 10,000 to a farmer. Only Karnataka gives that Yadiropaji gave. So all these are the narrative points. Sir. Congress might do a Twitter campaign or a Facebook campaign, but the elections are not won in Twitter. It is in the ground. So I am very confident. This time people have decided, look, we don't want Kichiri Sarkar again. We don't want three people fighting for one kursi. In Congress, it is like already multiple people fighting for one kursi. Let me give majority to one party. Let that party govern me well. The question among the three, which is a better party? It is BJP. So come May 13, we are confident that we should cross 130 on our own, like Amit Shah Ji said in the morning. We are very confident. We have, we have taken a lot of risk. Candidates, we have given better candidates. 62 people new. A lot of changes, youngsters, experience, a lot of combination. Whereas Congress, Congress have a 92-year-old candidate. Do you believe in a democracy, sir? I don't have a problem. You can have a 100-year-old as candidate. You're like, literally, what are you doing? You're torturing him. You bring a 92-year-old candidate in this heat. In April, May, you ask him to campaign. You're torturing him, 92-year-old candidate. They never changed a single sitting MLA. You look at our candidates. We have as young as 24, as young as 28. As old as 73, 74. Experience and youth. Congress, without taking any risk, democracy is all about change, sir. It's all about parivartan. It's all about fresh blood. We have done it. Amit Shah Ji said in the morning, it is the spirit of BJP who have done it. You don't do any change. You keep a 92-year-old gentleman in Davangari as a candidate. You come and address the press. You say, oh, ours, everything is fine. Everything will be fine when you take a risk. When you take a risk, something will not be okay. But people are appreciating. Oh, BJP has taken a risk. BJP has given fresh candidates. Let me appreciate it. This message is, is in the public mind in Karnataka, sir. The time's up, sir. But I have to ask you this question. It's IPL season. Are you a CSK supporter or a RCB supporter? Oh. I would say, sir, uh, maybe I think we are divided by IPL teams. But United is Indian. So I am a CSK hardcore supporter. But... Uh, because Dhoni is our asset and probably this is the last season for uh, Tala. And all of us are looking forward that uh, the rest of the matches that he plays, he should play with a lot of spirit and a lot of enjoyment and Tamil soil has given him a lot of love. So more than a CSK supporter, I'm, I'm, I'm very emotional also at this point of time because he has given a lot of joy to us over the last 13, 14 years. A lot of joy he has given to across the world and to Tamilian as a club. So I'm a hardcore CSK for the next few matches because... We want Dhoni ji to do well, enjoy, have a great life post this cricketing career also. Well, I'll disagree with you on that. I hope RCB wins the cup this time. <laughs> That's a long pending demand for our Bangalorean, sir. <laughs> keep, keep dreaming, sir. No doubt. <laughs> we'll see it this finals. <laughs> Mr. Annamalai, thank you so much for attending the India Today Roundtable. Ladies and gentlemen, Annamalai.